Welcome to part two. Two of the Smoldering Ashes are here right now to uh, discuss some of the other songs from Songs in the Key of Mountain Birds of Blue, our second disc, and the first song we're going to talk about is 9,000 Year Old Man, which uh, came from an idea that I had about teenagers going to a museum and looking at a mummified body and just critiquing it rather cruelly based on appearance mm -hmm. but the the song the song changed a little bit from there yes we we just took it and went, went a little bit farther with it and we 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 wanted to kind of write about how people looking at at a person or an event in the past uh, will look at it through modern perspective and um and usually it's not a very flattering picture of the past when you do that um because of course obviously things have changed uh, and things of you know um, well it's just a little different so um, that's kind of what we did with this song and then we had a little fun with it because we ended up making the vocals a bit more um, well we we made it sort of sound like a boys choir why we don't know really <laughs> if you any if you have an elementary school age <laughs> child it would sound really great yes uh, to, for them to sing in their school. We would love to have children, school children everywhere, singing this song because, it, you know, it, first of all, it would be really weird, but the <laughs> second, it would just be our song. Uh, and speaking of one that's not our song, uh, mm -hmm. our, uh, our cover this time around is a piece from Harold Arlen and Yip Harburg. And Arlen, I guess, wrote the music, maybe Harburg wrote the lyrics, but it's a song called Lydia the Tattooed Lady that came from a Marx Brothers movie called At the Circus. You can see the Marx Brothers right behind us. So not only a big uh, comedy influence, but a big musical influence also. Yes. And we did, a, I think, a bang-up version of Lydia the Tattooed yeah, Lady. Yeah, it really came out well. With mm -hmm. tubas. Yeah, and kazoo. And kazoo. Yeah, so. and a lot of yelling. Next stop, Teen Choice Awards. Uh, they love tubas and kazoos and yelling at the yes. Teen Choice Awards. So. Yes, and and you know it's it's profound the amount of, of that we've done in that one song. And the song itself, Lydia the Tattooed Lady, is profound now more than ever. Uh, mm -hmm. It makes sense and speaks to these troubled times. Yes, it does. Um, maybe the well okay now we'll talk about the first two songs that we recorded the first one they're both very short the first one is called vera and this is completely your baby so <laughs> uh, i helped yes. deliver it but i did not fertilize the egg <laughs> well vera yes vera it's just absurdity really it's just a ridiculous uh, situation um and, and uh and we just I just let it flow. It just came out of me. I don't really know how it happened. The the story of a young lady who makes a bad choice in boating crew and ends up paying <laughs> yes. with her life. Yes. Yeah, that's basically and Vera it is, in short. It's a very tragic story. I mean, ultimately, it really is. Um, even though she had great fashion choice um, initially, it, it was just her choice of crew. And the the same weekend we recorded Vera, we recorded what, what became the album opener, which is... Uh, called Home Safari Home, which is very sparse, and it, I, I guess I said it reminded me of Walter Mitty with an NRA card, uh, <laughs> that not only does he fantasize, but he acts it out. Yeah, it's it's someone who is, uh, you know, alone a lot, and, and they have a vivid imagination, and they, they love this fantasy that they built around themselves, and, and this is basically the result, um, Home Safari Home. It's a little bit also like the Rocky Raccoon of this album. And I mean, I'm I think of that in in a really in a good way. Yes. Even though it is again, it's absurd, and there's a little bit of absurdity on this album. Oh, a little. Um, the mm -hmm. there's another there's another song called Shake and Etch a Sketch, which is maybe the last thing that we did, and it also uses a kind of absurdist metaphor of. Uh, faking your own death yeah reinventing yourself ultimately is what yeah. that's all about you know and different ways you could go about it i got that i guess the that idea anyway from reading that agatha christie had planned out her uh, how to fake her own death 
And so it, it yeah. seemed like, well, that's a good metaphor for yeah. faking out. And, and in these changing. troubling times, you know, when everyone would like to reinvent themselves and get away from, you know, the troubles that they have, this, we thought it was a very apt song. And also I'll point out that uh, it's it will always have a place in my, well, really in my fingers because I, <laughs> I had to play the guitar solo, I think 94 times, I'm not sure. But I really tore my yeah. fingers up because oh, I was trying so hard to get it. But that was the last one that we recorded. Mm -hmm. It's a kind of stomping rock thing, which this is the first time we've done that, really. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that was a lot of fun. Uh, and I got to use um, I got to use a little bit of a wah wah pedal on that, and also on uh, Birds No Cage, which uh, is completely your okay. baby as well, lyrically. Yeah, it's um, it's just sort of exploring um, you know relationships and and people and and whether or not we really know someone if we really think that we know them, maybe there's a side to them that we don't know, and then suddenly it comes out and. And you either take refuge in it, uh, kind of like Oasis in the desert, or you um, end up feeling very frightened and confused and maybe even alone. So you're kind of like alone in the desert. So it's, and it's yeah, it has that it has that desert kind of backdrop to it. It's a little bit of a travel log, but in the middle of it, there's also uh, some drums that were recorded in Thailand. Yeah. And and the, and then I think that the other thing that's fun about it is vocally. I I experimented with some. Slightly, slightly. Um, Andrew's sister sort of vocals, so we'll see if it comes out as as a working vocal. And I I'm in there singing a little bit too, mixed kind of mercifully, <laughs> mercifully low. So, but it's it's a really good kind of noirish song, which I think will kind of set the tone for the next disc that yes. we make. But yeah, because it's going to go that direction, I think. Just a relief for this one. This is so sunny bright. I think we're going to go a little darker. How about how about give yourself a push? It's a little bit of self motivation set against a a backdrop that that has a lot of Asian elements. Yeah, we're not really um, sure how how we ended up going that direction with the instrumentation, but uh, we really we like that. So it, it's a good contrast um, from what we normally do. But the other thing about the, the lyrics is just basically self-motivation, yes. Um, you can take it as a small push or a huge push, and, and it's all up to the person uh, wanting to go somewhere. And kudos to Jeff for the, the twin uh, guitar solo. Kind of a, I guess a harmony guitar solo on that song. It sounds really yeah. great. Um, Okay, we'll, we'll talk about the closers. It's a kind of a, a twofer at the end. Le Locataire de Abalique is about four songs put together mm -hmm. uh, that, are, that are on the DVD. I think we talked about that. And from that point on, it goes into uh, Move the Clouds. They, they fit together thematically. And mm -hmm. yeah. the, a lot of the lyrics, I guess, for both songs came from the same lyric sheets that we were working on. Mm-hmm. And, and the, it does have a lot to do with basically feeling, uh, you know, that there is magic and there is, uh, um, I guess, a lot more power in the individual than that maybe we're taught or we believe in ourselves uh, at that, you know, maybe we go through hard times. We have to use uh, a little of that to get through the, uh, through the hard times. And it was, it was written during hard times for the, uh, for the writers, so uh, it was... It was this sort of an attempt to capture that feeling that you had when you're a, when you're a kid, because mm -hmm. if you feel like you're alone, it's it's ho it's horrifying. But it, you're not really alone if you're you, because you have you know you have that kind of power to, to mm -hmm. change everything. Yeah, the reinvention, and that's kind of a running theme, I, I guess, through this album. A uh, few of the songs, anyway, have that theme in it. Um, power of the person. And uh, the reinvention. And the reinvention of the band, really, with the same people. Mm -hmm. The the yeah. we we went in, in new directions and and took it into new places. And hopefully, each time we record, we'll be able to do that. But you'll still, hopefully, you'll still recognize us. You know, when you hear it, and you'll say, oh, "Okay, it's, it's still the same people singing." So I can listen to it. Yeah. So the again the disc is uh, songs in the key of Mountain Birds Blue, um, 
Smoldering Ashes is the name of the band. Trackworks is the label. America is the country. And we hope you'll pick up a copy today or tomorrow.